Welcome to the Chomp Man Games Without Code tutorial series. In this Games Without Code video, we'll begin creating our gameplay by creating the movement controls for our Chomp character, as well as the dot pellets he'll consume throughout the level. We've made all the original assets that we created for the game completely free, so all the characters, levels, textures, sound, and menus are completely free to download and use in this or any other project. Links in the description below. Let's first start by opening our level 01 scene. And let's drag our Chomp Man character prefab into our scene. And we're just gonna place him near the starting position of our level. Now with the character selected, we want to create a new flow machine. So we're gonna go to add component and we're gonna add a flow machine. And once we have our flow machine up, we want to create a new macro and we're gonna call this macro player movement controls macro. And we're gonna save that into our macro folder. So with the graph editor open, we can start developing our movement controls for our character. So the logic for our base move controls are fairly simple. We want whenever the controller presses up, down, left or right on a keyboard or joystick or the WASD key that the character will move in the appropriate direction. Now let's begin by first naming our flow machine and we're gonna name that player movement flow. Now to get our basic movement, we can use a get input axis and we're going to get both our horizontal and our vertical axis. So we're going to use a get input axis by name. And for our input axis name, we're going to use a horizontal. And now let's duplicate this. And for our second, we're going to have a vertical axis. Both the horizontal and vertical input axis are defined by Unity. And if we go into edit project settings and we look at our input, we can see that Unity has given us a default of a horizontal and a vertical input axis and it has already defined our inputs for that axis. Now we can always go and we can add more to that, but at the moment, we're just gonna simply use the default. And back in Bolt, we're gonna grab a character control move node. And for our character control move node, what we need to do is we need to use the input from our accesses and use that to input into our node. So to do that, we're gonna use a create a vector three with X, Y, and Z node. And for our X, we're going to use a horizontal axis input. And for our Z, we're going to use our vertical input. So next, we're going to connect our update event into our character control. We're going to use our output from our create vector three, and we're going to add that into our character control as well. So now we have the basics for our control. Let's test that out. So in Bolt, we can see that we now have our vertical and horizontal movement, and our character will move accordingly. However, we can see we have a few issues with the speed of the movement, despite the fact we're moving the character isn't rotating or isn't turning the direction we're moving. It's simply looking forward. And something else you may have noticed, if we go into our scene view while we're in play mode, and we can see, despite the fact we set our blink state up in our one of our former exercises, our character isn't blinking. So let's go to that graph and we can see that we have these variables that aren't set. So before we continue setting up our movement, let's first fix our blink state. So one of the problems that we're having with our blink state is it's not able to find our variables because our variables will seen variables. Well, we will be using seen variables for specific variables that will need to be set by other elements within our scene. For most of the variables in our blink, we could just essentially set them as object elements. Then bolt within our object variable window, we're gonna add these elements back into object elements as well as change them within our node. So for our character mesh render, we're gonna keep that as a scene variable since we'll also need that variable to control when the character opens and closes his mouth when he's eating the pellets. So we're gonna set that as a scene variable. So aside from our character mesh render, we can set all of our other variables to object variables. So let's do that now. All right, now without all of our object variables now set, let's test that out and make sure that our blink is still working. So now with our blink working correctly again, let's select our chomp character and we're gonna go in, back into our player movement flow. So the first thing that we wanna do is we wanna slow our player movement down. So to do that, similar to our blink speed, what we're gonna do is we're gonna divide that by a value 
So let's use a scene value for this. And we're going to call this player movement speed. And the reason that we're using a scene value is because this value is also going to be affected by other factors in the game. So once we have that created, let's create a divide node and let's divide both our input axis by the player movement speed. So let's set our player movement speed value. And before we test that out, let's go and let's make sure that this is set to a scene variable, not an object variable. We can now see that our character is moving much slower, much more manageable. And we can also alter this if we wanted to move a bit faster. So one of the things that, that we may have noticed is that our character is a little bit too big for some of the intersections in our map. So if we go and open our prefab, let's, let's adjust the height down just a bit to about 0.85. So we can now see that our character is the right size and is able to fit in any of the areas in the map that he needs to go. So let's go back to our player movement flow. And let's add the ability so that the character looks a direction when we move that direction. So before we do this, let's first walk through the logic that we'll need to put in place to make this happen. So if we notice during play mode, once we press left and right, up and down our input axis, we can see in bold that our input value is changing from a positive to a negative for both our horizontal and our vertical input. So we want to say whenever the input axis is set to a positive turn this way and whenever the input axis is set to a negative turn this way. And we want to do that for both our horizontal and our vertical axis. So to do this, we we'll need to compare the values that it's receiving from the axis. And if it's receiving the correct value, we we'll need the character to turn that direction. So one of the ways that we can achieve this is using a comparison node as well as a look at node to get the character controller to rotate that direction. And in our comparison node, we can see that we have the greater than, equal to, less than, not equal to, and so forth. But we need a value for it to compare to be able to use our comparison node. So let's create two object float variables, one to represent our horizontal input values and one to represent our vertical input values. And we're going to call these move X value and move Z value. And we want these values to be set every time that the player uses the horizontal and vertical input. And we want to use the values that we're setting to create our vector three as well. So before we move to adding in our look control, let's first make sure that everything is still working correctly. So we can see we're still receiving our, our input and our character control, and we can also see our X value as well as our Z value is being stored and set whenever we're moving the character. So let's organize these in a group real quick before we move on. So to group, if we hold control and we left click and we drag over all the nodes that we want to select, we can have a group for our nodes. And once our group is selected, we can then move all those nodes at once as well as help our graph to be a bit better organized. So to begin, we want to get our X value and we want to say if our character is either positive or negative, we want it to rotate that direction. And we're going to use a branch node similar to how we use within our blink as well as several of our other charts that we created. So we also want to make sure that updates and checks every frame. And from there, if it's true, we're going to use a transform look at world position node. And we're going to set that to a negative 90 in the X. And we're going to duplicate this. And we're going to say if that is negative, we also want that to be a positive 90 in the X. So let's grab all these nodes and we're going to control D to duplicate that. And then we're going to change this value to use the Z value. And then we're going to change these instead of using 
instead of a negative 90 on our x we're going to do negative 90 on our z and a positive 90 on our z let's hit play and let's test our logic out so we can now see that if we press left our character is going to look left if we press right our character is going to look right if we press down the character looks down if we press up the character is going to look up and we can also see within bolt that the moment we are pressing it is showing that that element is true and we also have our other states working well as well so the next thing that we want to do before we move on is we want to make sure that we update our prefab right now it's just currently going to be on the object in our scene view so to do that what we can do is we can right click and we can go to copy component we can open our prefab and we can go to paste as new component and we can now see that we now have that player movement within our prefab we go back to our scene we now have two so let's delete our first one so we just have the one that's in our prefab and let's also copy our blink component and let's go and up open our prefab and let's paste these component values into our blink component that way we still have all the changes that we made by adjusting these all to object variables and the next thing that we need to do is we need to make sure that we copy our object variables as well so we're just going to copy this copy this component we want to go back into our prefab and we're going to paste this into our object variables we're going to paste as value save our prefab and go back into our scene let's delete this bring it bring our character back into our scene just to make sure everything is working correctly and we can now see our character blinks we have our movement as well as the characters looking left and right now one of the other things that we can do since we added Doltween into our project instead of the character just rapidly looking the direction we can have that character smoothly transition to look that direction as well to do this we can simply replace our look at transform nodes with a Doltween look at transform node so if we hit play we can now see our character has a much smoother transition into looking the direction opposed to just simply snapping in that direction we so we can adjust our speed that the character looks that direction if we feel it's too fast or too slow and as a way to just simply adjust these uh, without having to go back in and type it in for each node what we can also do is we can create a float variable and use that to control all of our look at node so let's create a look at speed we're going to use that for our duration this way if we want to change uh, the speed that the character looks um, we can set it to something like two just so we can know that it's working and how long that's going to take just do an extreme value and set that to 15 if we want the character to look a little bit faster in that direction so now we have our character look and our movement controls done let's move on to adding in the edible dots don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell to be the first to see this and many other tutorials, game development tips, and free game asset giveaways.